This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome back. So now here in this session, uh, we are going to discuss automatic payment program itself, but uh, this time we'll see uh, the testing part. So we'll do one thing. Uh, in previous session, I've quoted some example. So we'll do one thing guys, we'll test exactly the scenario itself. Okay, now, so here what's happening, I'll just do one thing guys. So these many invoices, total 11 invoices are there. So I'm going to reduce some of the invoices. Okay, we'll post the seven invoices. Okay, seven invoices out of which like these will be, uh, three will be overdue, one will be due and remaining three will be not due. And uh, this terms of payment is there. So I'll use a different terms of payment triple zero one so that immediately invoices are going to be due immediately. Okay. So we'll do one thing. Or else like in this date, if we have to post, then you have to open like uh, for whole year. As I suggested in the previous session that better to open the pre period for whole year so that what is happening because here the payment, sorry, invoice supposed to be posted in the previous period, then only it is going to be due and overdue right I'll, I'll just show you here practically itself let me log in first and it's very simple guys let me log in first and then i'll show you now here so first of all go to ox xk02 xk02 and in your vendor master, okay, check what terms of payment we have given, guys. Okay, or else, uh, okay, give the vendor master number here. Uh, this is the vendor master number, and your company code is like TM00. And here, in vendor master, what terms of payment we have given? TM34. I think coveted to assign TM30 itself, so that is it is going to be okay. Now, so we'll just post some invoices and you see how it is going to react. So FB60 is the transaction code by which we are going to post the vendor invoices. So first of all, we should have some invoices or else I'll just do one thing, go to FBL1N and first of all, check whether any open invoices are there or not. And if it is there, then uh, Okay, so one invoice is there, guys, and that too by TM34. This terms of payment means discount terms of payment is there, right? Terms of payment with discount or what? Let me check it. Yes, discount is there. Okay, but again, this is like this is not going to be selected by system. This is uh, why because look at here, it is still not due. No issues. We'll just do one thing, then we are going to post these invoices. Okay, these invoices. open one more screen and keep that vendor master screen as it is why because while running app you guys are going to get some issues so we'll check it <coughs> and i'll let you know so here fb60 your vendor so give your vendor number and invoice date so we'll do one thing, whatever the document date and posting date is there, I'm going to keep same date in both field. And amount, so this amount, 4,000, keep 4,000. So I'll post the invoices quickly. And GL account, guys, I'll, I'll keep any expense GL you can keep. It's not like that you have to keep like stock or a raw material or something. Any GL expense GL we can keep because anyway, we are performing testing only, right? So you press enter, enter. Okay, and enter once again because we are posting why this warning message is appearing here because we are posting this transactions in uh, the previous period, right? The current period is it's August, so current period is like here. Uh, what to say? Current period means current month is August, but we are posting in July, right? Click on payment and look at here TM30 means 30 days, so it is going to be due on 14th 08, right? Look at here due date. 14.08 so it is perfect save it in the same way 
we will post even other invoices also again give you a better number same date in document date posting date both and by k and then again give any external gl here so i'm going to give rent gl itself and save it press enter twice and thrice okay so for you this one also if you take it like it is going to be due on this date right now on this date again we have to post invoice for the 2000 okay it's taking some time guys might be the server is a bit slow so let me do one thing let me create one more station press enter here now it got posted noises so we are going to post another invoice worth up worth up we have to give that amount give this zl account and press enter 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 Price and then save it since we are posting in the previous period that is why uh, you know like twice and price you have to enter because system is releasing a warning message that this invoices is getting posted in the previous period so it is a kind of warning message saying that kindly check it whether you have given the correct invoice date and posting date or not correct invoice date and posting it or not right so anyway knowingly we are posting this transactions in the previous period so that if 40 days is going to be added still the invoices are going to be overdue and due and not due so again on this date 6000 so here give you a vendor number give this date and here 6000 and give your gl number again 6000 press enter okay so save it quickly and this date 7000 so i'm posting the invoices quickly guys because how to post the invoice is already shown in the previous session so hope you guys will not have any problem to understand this simply invoice posting that's it okay so now you get here there is no any warning message why because this invoice is getting posted in current period in august right save it there won't be any warning message for this one again uh, this is going to be posted in previous period so for this one you'll be having warning message and it is showing like 21st so it won't it won't be due why because uh, i'll tell you guys today is 21st so you just better to give your 22nd okay this example i will it was given yesterday so now it become 22nd so if we are going to post on this date on this date then it is going to be today is 21st right so now today's date i'm going to change it and i'll make it 21st okay so now here i'm going to give the state and amount any amount here is supposed to be given so this is 1000 so amount is 1000 and here again 1000 if you press enter now warning message is there because we are posting this and then we have last this is also in the previous period itself but still it will not it, it's not going to be due why because 25th is the future date right so 2000 sorry uh, here i'm supposed to give vendor number and then date and date and again we have amount 2000 4000 here and again it's 2000 press enter twice and thrice and save it so now here look at here now this all invoice has been posted so here if you talk about like how many invoices supposed to be due so 4000 5000 2000 and 1000 right so here total 11000 plus 1000 it means system should post payment for the invoices which is total worth of 10,000 only remaining this this and this 
4, 5, and 7 should not be selected by system, right? Now, this invoice due is also supposed to be selected because it, it become due today itself, right? Now, now, okay, and there is one more invoice, guys, which is not due, which is posted already by using a different terms of payment, but that is also not due, guys, worth of 1000. That invoice is worth of 4000. So that is also it that is not due. So that is also not supposed to be selected. This invoice is also not due. So this is also not going to be selected. Right now. So we'll do one thing. Okay. Now here. So first of all, we'll run automatic payment program. Okay. For a single vendor itself. And uh, later on, you can create few more vendors, guys. And the way I'm going to run, you can. Uh, run for even two vendors or three vendors see multiple vendor means more than one whether you run for two vendor or 20 vendor right so now here so first of all i'll run for one vendor and uh, you just have a look on the process and then it's a kind of assignment for you people you can create a two vendor or three vendor and you post the invoices and then you can run for multiple vendor how to run for multiple vendor that also i'll show you guys hope uh, you know like so you have once you are able to understand the concept easily you guys can run with multiple vendors also and this is how it is going to happen in real time also so now how to run this automatic payment program guys f110 this is a very famous transaction code guys keep in your mind f110 always is going to be used to run automatic payment program Press entered and FBZP is going to be used to configure this automatic payment program. Right? So now here we'll do one thing. We'll give a date. Run date, identification code, everything is going to be given. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys, so now here. You have to specify the run date and then your identification code. Run date means the date on which we are going to run this APP. So let's suppose this is the date we are going to give here. An identification code, let's suppose TM00, A, B, C, anything can be given. Identification code could be anything, guys. Maximum five digit and minimum even one digit code also you can give. It could be numerical, numerical, alphabetic, whatever you want, you can give. Now click on parameter then. Here in parameter, we are going to give the company code first. And then for which payment method it is going to be run. This APP we are going this time like payment is going to be released, like whatever payment is here. What will happen, guys? Now let's suppose whatever uh you no, know, like we'll we'll run this F110 in the sense automatic payment program. So what does it mean, guys? If F110 means this is going to clear our books of account. But what about the actual payment guys vendor has received no vendor is going to receive the payment only if the check is going to be printed and if it is going to be sent to the vendor or is uh, your uh, payment team will be there so based on like this payments run whatever that vendor has been uh, you know like included in that for those vendors they are going to make whatever online transfer is there so once the transfer is going to happen then only they are going to receive the amounts so here what will happen guys this time we are running like app so this time like let's suppose uh, how the payment is going to be processed online transfer or through check so here online transfer we have already mapped payment method t in your payment method t and next payment date means like when in future when you are going to run this automatic payment program there is a logic behind that guys but once i told like in the previous session itself i told you that i'll try to uh, record again uh, what to say this automatic payment program separately at advanced level right now as a beginner uh, you should have like understanding of uh, this app like what is this app how it does it runs and all so that is why but I'll record a separate tutorial for advanced level. So there the all logics are going to be explained. Okay. Uh, in the sense like the logic behind this next payment date and few more things I have to cover. So that is going to be covered. Now here, but 
overall what is the logic behind next payment date guys so in next payment date generally whatever like whatever the next run date is there is going to be specified so what is your next run date guys so next run date is let's suppose so 23rd i'm going to give okay every week or every alternative day or every after three days it is it depends upon the organizations if big organizations then they are going to run this every day or every alternative day small medium size organizations means every monday or every tuesday or every friday they are going to run so here i'm going to give the date and here so since we are having a single vendor what is the vendor number guys triple zero three Triple zero three. This is the number. So I'm going to give this one, right? But what you people have to do? Let's suppose if you have to run. First of all, you run for a single vendor, and later on, as I told you, like as an assignment, if you are trying to run for multiple vendor, right? What you have to do? You simply you need to give here zero, and here you need to give z z z like that, like that. It means whatever vendors are there, all vendors are going to be included in this app run. Okay, so now I'm having a single vendor. I'm going to give that vendor number. Right? What is the use of this free selection tab, guys? The free selection tab means, let's suppose, if you have to include or exclude something. Okay, if you have to include or exclude something, let's suppose I'm having like these many invoices are there. These all invoices are there. Out of which these four invoices got selected. Right? But I want to exclude this invoice number second because let's let's suppose some dispute is there with the vendor invoice got posted but as far as like price is not correct whatever amount we have received is incorrect or something some dispute is there so it, in that case what is happening we want to release the payment for one three and six for these invoice numbers but second we don't want to release the payment so what will happen guys here if you run this automatic payment program system is going to select all the invoices system is going to select all the invoices but here you can do one thing you are going to select the document number you can select the document number you can click on exclude value and here you can give the document number and then easily you guys will be able to uh, what to say exclude this invoice okay this is also practically i'll show you guys as i told you like multiple things i have to record so that is that will be recorded now here Click on additional log tab. Additional log tab. Here you need to apply a check mark on these three. Okay. Now, so if you are going to apply a check mark and all, then system is going to search certain things. What is going to be searched by system, guys? So system is going to search these all uh, invoices are due, due dates and all, and these invoices are posted against which payment method and all, right? So this is what the and again here you have to give the vendor number. So our vendor number is 11003. Give this one, and if it is for multiple vendor, then you can apply a check mark here. Sorry, you can give zero to ZZ the way I have given here in parameter, right? And save it. Print out data medium means if you are going to run payment for check method and all, then you have to create. You have to go to print out data medium and all, and there we have to. Here you have to, and you have to create a variant first. Okay, once the variant is variant is created, then what will happen guys check printing will take place. But your check printing means uh, you need to take uh, help of the ABAP consultant, technical consultant, because if you talk about the formats and all, right? So layout is going to be developed by those people only. Now, so you just do one thing guys, no need to do anything here in print out data medium since we are using online payment. Now here you need to save, save the parameter. And now come to here. Look at here. Parameter has been entered. Parameter has been entered. Now what will happen? First of all, we have to run the proposal, and then we have to run the payment. What is this proposal and proposal run and payment run, guys? So proposal run is called provisional run, and payment run is original run right in the sense like provisional run in the sense why we have to like you can say proposal run is a kind of test run you can say proposal run if you are going to run proposal then you will come to know that whether any error has taken place 
or you want to edit the proposal if you want to like let's suppose you will come to know that okay all the invoices got selected all the invoices like this four invoices got selected right so if you want to if you want to like remove something this invoice you can edit the proposal right so now proposal means uh, or else like whatever errors are taking place guys you can check the proposal and you can find like okay these are the invoices supposed to be selected but here uh, system has not selected any invoices now why because certain error is there so you can analyze the pr proposal and then you can rectify the issues so we'll do one thing guys we'll check we'll run the proposal first and we'll check whether any issue has taken place or not and if any if any issue is taking place i'll show you guys how to analyze how to analyze the proposal how to find out the root cause behind these issues okay so click on proposal and click on start immediately and press enter and enter so look at your payment proposal has been created earlier yellow color message was there but right now payment proposal has been created so you can have you have to check the proposal click on here display proposal log and if you click here now so multiple details are there you just come at bottom come down scroll down and look at here there is no any accounting entry is taking place here it means error is there problem is there in this proposal how you will find out what is the error guys so always you try to search from the bottom like whatever the four or five lines are there from bottom side better to search from there because most likely the solutions you'll be getting in that last four or five line itself so look at here these all are related to amounts and all okay now payment method selections for item due now for the amount let's suppose total 12,000 what I said guys total 12,000 only right now and then here then here none of the payment method T has been entered in master record or in document try to think guys what could be the possible solution first of all think like what is the meaning of this the payment method T entered in master data master record is nothing but master data or in document the problem is we are running this automatic payment program click on back button we are running this app and click on here parameter so we are running for payment method d so now system is going to search in fbl1n here you click on first of all you click on refresh so the all invoices are going to appear yeah system is going to check here okay just hold for a second guys i'm getting some important call so i'll pause the recording first this conference will now be recorded okay so sorry guys i got a call in between so anyway i pause the recording so that there won't be any uh what is a gap or there won't be any like video is not going to be much lengthy here so again what we were discussing here we were discussing about like okay look at here multiple invoices has been posted right so system is checking here like since we are running we are running this automatic payment program for payment method t now system is checking whether any invoices whatever the invoices are there it is posted against which payment method so if you check any invoices look at here payment method is blank so how the payment method is going to be appear here guys payment method will appear only either while posting the invoices if you are going to give this payment method manually or else in vendor master we have to assign the payment method so system is going to copy the payment method directly from vendor master itself these two things this is what the message is showing here was quite clear in the proposal saying that saying that none of the payment method t is entered either in master record or to the document neither it is there in master record also or in the document also so solution is quite simple what you have to do guys you just do one thing go to xk02 and enter the payment method click on first of all you need to click on here itself guys here payment transactions and enter the payment method here t and save it so now we have directly entered in the master record itself the payment method we have entered in the master record itself 
and against this master this window master itself we have posted all the invoices so now there is no problem why because system is going to check the payment method in vendor master and will come to know okay against this vendor master since only one payment method is there so by default whatever invoices got posted guys that is posted against payment method t itself right now now here so come back again and then what to do guys then here you need to now so this in this proposal what is happening guys there is an error fault is there right so this is called faulty proposal right uh, so what we have to do now whatever error was there that we have rectified just now so So sorry guys now here lots of problem is going on now the power is gone so again the network was finished i was going through my mobile wi-fi so i don't know like uh, how much you have heard so i'll just do one thing uh, I'll, I'll repeat from here to get here the uh, this is also gone and activity is also gone so i'll have to log in again so but before that i'll just show you guys uh, so here what we have done as i have shown you guys that error was there in the proposal okay payment method t was not assigned to the master record or else to the document so what we have done in vendor master in vendor master we have entered the payment method and then what i said then what next guys the next one is you have to come here to f110 and here you need to click on edit and you need to delete the proposal here we have to delete the proposal okay and then we have to rerun the proposal once again okay in between guys i think might be some one minute or one and a half minute uh what is it pause will be there uh, there won't be any voice there won't be any this one so you just skip that part okay i'm sorry for that so now uh so now the since network was gone so it is already automatically logged out i'll have to log in one again once again and then i'll show you guys even if it is logged out also no no worries because our run date and identification code if you are able to if you know this run date and identification code then once again we can start from here itself okay click on no uh, then let me log in once again so now I'll suggest once again, guys, better to use online server because in online server, more and more number of errors will be there. And if the more number of errors are there, then you guys are going to explore the solutions and all. And this is how you guys are going to become, uh, you know, like your knowledge is going to be, you know, enhanced. Out, okay. So in, this is what the benefit of online server. Because multiple people are doing their practice, some of the people are going to make settings somewhere and you guys are going to get the issues. Then what will happen if you're going to find out the solutions if you're going to search solutions somewhere on google or somewhere then what will happen then you will come to know later on if you're uh, going to explore or it's then then you'll come to know this is a client level setting then you'll be having some idea what is this client level setting at all anyway this i'm going to explain later what is the difference difference between company code level setting and client level setting but right now we are talking about automatic payment program so once again f110 
and you give your run date so run date i'm able to remember here 21 08 2020 if you are not able to remember you need to click here just click here and look at here now so this is what my before that multiple other people have run you know they what to say pp in a different different date but mine is this one right always give your company code and then uh, it will be easy to identify right double click so this is how also to get your proposal has been created but there is error or issue in this proposal now what we have done guys we have already rectified this issues okay in Venda master i have already assigned the payment method right you can check it here at I'll take it guys yes now it is already there it means we have saved it now so you just delete the proposal now look at here so it got deleted now once again you have to run the proposal start immediately press enter and to okay so look at here now so proposal has been created click on display proposal and come down and look at here now counting entries entry is taking place here right this 1000 is your bank zeal which is going to be debited which is going to be credited and this is your vendor number is going to be debited okay so now it means everything is perfect and 12,000 only is there so you just click on back button here okay and now this time we have to go for payment run proposal run is fine everything is fine you click on payment run and press enter now look at here payment run has been cancelled so if payment run has been cancelled guys now again we have to find out now where is the problem why the payment run has been cancelled so might be a chance is that there is a issue related to number range most likely this is what the issue you will be getting during payment run or is there won't be any other in real time this error will not appear but of course like when you guys are doing practice and that way if you are in online server then this error may appear why because if you talk about this app so we are running this app but app is going to be whatever this is a kind of transaction itself guys transaction is getting posted payment is getting posted and of course it is going to be posted against a particular document type right so you have created a different number range and you are going to assign this number range to the document type somebody is going to create a different number range and he's his own number range he is going to assign to that document type so your code is zero and somebody has created 15. so what is happening of course there is a conflict right contrast so now here click on payment and look at here the in company code tm00 document number range 20 is missing now again here is the issues okay in company code tm00 document number is 20 is missing for 2020 so it means document number 20 is missing so what you have to do either you have to create a number range number range with the code 20 now if you check if you are going to check here which number range we have created f b n1 is the transaction code and here you give your company code tm00 and check which number range we have created so we have created 0 1 17 19 right these are the number range which we have created but 20 is not created so what you have to do either you have to assign 0 1 17 or 19 against that particular document type or else you have to create a number range called 20. so if you are going to create a number range 20 then issue is going to be solved here itself but what i'll take up what i'll do guys i will not create a number range here new number range i'm going to assign my own number range 0 1 itself okay what is the benefit guys the benefit is i'll tell you now so here the next question is this 01 we have created let's suppose 01 is going to be assigned 
So zero and zero one number range zero one is going to be assigned against which document type? This is what the question. So now the answer is we have to find out against which document type the ATP is going to run. But here you won't be able to find out the document type. So how to find out the document type, guys? Just think, put some pressure on your on your mind. I'll tell you guys, this is already explained there in configurations. There in configurations, I've explained over there. Um, I think uh, if you have noticed, it's okay. If you haven't noticed, then I'll explain once again. In configurations, for configurations, what do you have to do? You just do one thing, go to FBZP transaction port once again. These FBZP and F110, very famous transaction code is there that is supposed to be there at the tip of your tongue, right? Now, FBZP. Okay. Now, here, payment method in country. And our payment method is T. Double click on T. Look at here, guys, the document type which is signed called ZP document type. So from here, you will come to know against which document type automatic payment program is going to run. Okay, so now we got document type is ZP, right? Now, so now what to do? So now we have to do one thing. We we'll just do one thing. So now against ZP document type, we are going to assign the number range 0, 01. Okay, number range 0, 01. So here, where is the number range 0, 01? It's that you can get from FBN1 transaction code. Slash and OBA7. So how to define the document type, guys? OBA7 is the transaction code by which you have to define the document type. You just go here and click on position and SA document type. Uh, I'll repeat again, no need to remember all the transaction code guys while practice. There are several transaction code which is going to be used on frequent basis. So you guys will be able to remember lots of and some of the transaction code which is going to be used like uh, very less. So if you need to, if you want to mug up, you can mug up just for your practice purposes itself. It is not at all important for your interview point of uh, interview point of view. Why? Because uh, neither transaction code nor path. Nothing is going to be asked by people. They will ask the logic. They will ask the logic. They will never ask how to run this APP, which transaction code we are going to do, or how to run this automatic, sorry, how to configure this automatic payment program, which transaction we are going to use. These things are not going to be asked by people because there is no logic behind asking these questions. If somebody has to ask a question, now what is happening? Let's suppose, okay, I'll, I'll just ask here itself. But I'll just do one thing. Let me, uh, what do you say, complete this. First of all, ZP, ZP document type, double click on ZP document type here, and then here number range, zero one I'm going to assign and save it. So what I have done, guys, number range I have assigned. So again, I'm going to delete this payment run, which is, it is having some fault. Click on edit, and now this time payment. And delete output. Yes, and then once again we are going to run the payment. Press enter. Enter. So look at here, one generated, one completed. So if you click on payment proposal, look at here. This is so now 12,000 means how many invoices are there, guys? In 12,000, how many? So look at here, you can like display proposal. So here, double click on 12,000. And look at here, these are the invoices 4,000, 5,000, 2,000, 1,000. Document number 15, 16, 17, and 20. These four document number. Where it is, I'll just do one thing. So come here. No, not here. I'll just do one thing. I'll open one more because once again, I have to come back on this one. Uh, because I, I said, like, I'll ask a very simple question, guys. So here, uh, just FPL1 thing. Okay. I always try to record like small, uh, what do you say, videos like of half an hour or max to max half an hour or, you know, 35 minutes so that it will be easy for you guys to practice. It won't be more, you know, much boring. 
so i think it's already half an hour is completed i guess so anyway we are at uh, the end moment itself so now here so look at here only these are the open items are there it means whatever remaining was there that is already gone okay i have have i opened like these things i think let me check it no every l31 was not open so now whatever the remaining document uh, whatever remaining uh, transactions were there like this document number 15 16 17 20 that is already gone it is posted it is posted there is no it is not there in open item if you check at cleared item it will be there okay so this is what this is how uh, what to say you have to run the app guys and now uh, final questions i said like if somebody has to ask a question the basic questions i'll i'll, I'll what to say ask here so how, like once you run this automatic payment program what is happening system is going to generate a payment document number because if you talk about here we just do one thing click on back button okay all items and execute so now here whatever transactions code you just come down or is like your document type okay document type and click on filter and give you a zp document type it means whatever zp document type look at here this is what so look at here a document number got generated a document number got generated right so now question is how system is going to trigger this document number what is the logic right so what you have to say because app automatic payment program we are not going to run document type against a particular document type so how system is going to trigger the document type because number range is going to be assigned against document type itself so what you have to say see i'll tell you first of all we have created a number range 1000 to 199 okay and so this is your range from number and to try to understand guys whatever things i'm explaining here of course this is pretty simple but you watch multiple tutorials are there on udemy youtube everywhere right if you talk about the configuration part everybody are going to tell you how to do like this is how you have to configure this is how you have to configure you have to do this that that multiple things but logic means very less very less people are going to explain the logic right so understand this the simplest way i'm trying to explain okay and here so from and to and here nr status nr status nr status means number in status so now here let's suppose if that already here number range 1005 is there so the next document number 1006 will be generated right this is what the logic whatever till 1005 already document got posted the next document number will be 1006 i uh, hope this you guys are able to understand this it is already explained in the previous session right now so this number range we have created against a particular code let's suppose zero one whatever this number range code is there that is going to be assigned against this is number range code okay so look at here this is going to be assigned against a document type okay i'm typing in shortcut guys don't look at the spellings what is the document type zp okay and this zp document type we have assigned against payment method right this is assigned against a payment method payment method let's suppose t and we have run the app app is going to be run against a particular payment method itself right app is going to be run against payment method right so now you try to correlate look at here now it become very simple so the question is now let's suppose here if the system is going to generate a document number 1006 so how system has triggered that document number right so first of all when you run this app app is going to be run against a payment method right here you just do one thing where it is it is here come back so app is going to run against a particular so whenever we are going to run app system is going to trigger against which payment method app is getting done payment method 
payment method C system is able to take it. So APP is going to run against a particular payment method. So system got to know the payment method T. Against payment payment method T, what document type is assigned? So that is ZP document type. System is going to search in background. Against ZP background, which number range code we have given, guys? So we have assigned 01. And against 01 for your company code, what range we have given? So let's suppose 1000 to 199. And in NR status, let's suppose system is going to check what number got updated. So 1005, it means the next document number which is going to be created is 1006. This is how you have to say. It is just like a mathematical formula, guys. See, uh, that's what I'm saying. You watch multiple APP related videos are there, right? But if somebody is going to ask this question, this is a very basic question. So how many of you will be able to reply like that? Whoever is going to reply like that is going to be selected. Right or is in a single line everybody are going to say yes number range is going to be generated Sorry document number is getting generated from number range. Yes, I also know and like you if there is hundred of candidates for that interview Everybody are going to say the same thing. So why somebody is going to select you only? You cannot be select selected unless you are unique compared to other people Right, you know thousands of candidates standing in the queue. So that's what I'm saying guys. You have to give the logical answer. You have to give the logical answer and this is what the logical answer. This is what is going to be expected by this is how like people are expecting you. If somebody is, is asked these questions, if somebody has asked these questions, then they are expecting it this way that okay from first of all system is going to trigger A from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, F, and then finally it is going to trigger G. In the sense payment method, then document type, number range, number range code, from there system is going to trigger the number range, then system is going to check NR status, whatever number is there plus one is getting generated. Hope you guys uh, like this session and once again I'll request uh, that if you have not given your feedback and all, and you provide your feedback also so that I'll come to know how the session and all. And again, in next session, we are going to discuss some a different topic. And that is also going to be interesting topic, guys. I'm going to start. Uh, okay, in next session itself, we'll see like which topic is going to be started. So that's all in this session, guys. Thanks for watching.